I'm making this video because I just recently bought a board and I did not realize how many different camera profiles came out in the past five years or so. You know, I've been snowing for 17 years, so I was there when Rocker became a big thing, when the, the hybrids were coming out, when flat camera boards were big. And now it seems that everybody kind of, you know, at least the, the pros are all kind of transitioning back to camber. But now we have different variations of camber. So I'm just gonna start off from square one. I'm gonna talk to you like, um, maybe you're somebody who's never even heard of snowboard profiles before. And I'm gonna get all the way up into the uh, more technical stuff. Now in this video, I'm just talking about snowboard profiles. So just the, just the side of it, right, just the shape. I'm not going to be talking about things like side cuts and flex and all the other stuff. This is just focusing on profiles. I might sway a little bit, but just profiles. Uh, if you guys get a lot of value out of this, I might make videos on other parts of snowboards. But first, let's start with camber. So camber is that traditional frowny face shape. If you look at the side of a snowboard, this is going to give you the maximum amount of pop. Simply because when you load the board down and you and you get up on the side you're basically fighting that arc and you're re reversing it so you're taking something like this and you're flexing it like that when you do an ollie so just naturally it has the most resistance you're going to get the most snap out of it uh, you, you're also this is going to put pressure all the way out to the contact points so you're going to get the full edge hold you're going to because it's going to it's going to put pressure all the way along your edge now the downside of this is for beginners it can be a little bit catchy it can be a little bit hard to turn if you're in tight situations like a tree run and it doesn't float the best in powder because it has a tendency to dive forward and down into the snow now there are variations of this that allow you to do that and i will talk that allow you to snowboard and powder um quite a bit um and one of them is you know setbacks insert setbacks and things like that can actually help significantly that way you're not your back legs not burning but these little lines just kind of represent where you where your binding inserts would be um, and this will this will be more important as we go through the other profiles so the next one i want to talk about is your basic rocker just straight up rocker right um this is a really mellow one I, i'm not an artist but i tried to i try to make it as realistic as possible um, basically rocker it's, it's exactly the same way it's just rocker all the way through and then you have the classic kicks off the end um as you would with every snowboard but this one so when you weight it down it's going to be flat between your feet but the the outside of your feet is going to start lifting off so this board this type of board it's going to be good in in the tree runs it's going to be good in the powder it might even be good on rails if you like pressing because it's already in that shape when you ollie it you're not fighting um, the arc shape of it, so it's not going to get as much pop. But if you're just trying to flex it and keep the nose up or keep the tail up, if you're in a press, this shape's going to be really good for that. It's going to flex in the middle. It's going to be very playful. Um, the downside to rocker is that you have that pivot point between your feet, right? It's it's not like camber where you you have four points of control. You basically it feels like you have one point of control kind of sprawled out between your feet. So if you land a little bit funky on a jump, you're probably gonna keep spinning if you're in the middle of a spin. Um, if you land heavy on your tail, it's not gonna push you back up as much. It's not gonna have as much resistance. It's more likely to just kind of slide out and from underneath of you. Um, whereas camber, if you landed heavy on your tail, like with your weight back, it's gonna have more resistance because it's gonna, you're basically, you're pushing against this back part and in order for it to slide out from underneath of you, you're got, it really has to be, you know, it has to go from here to here to here, rather than with rocker, just from here to here. So it has a lot, camber has a lot more resistance when you land deep or when you land a jump um, heavy on your back foot or on your front foot even, or rocker is gonna be more forgiving, but it doesn't have that same kind of return to center as you would like to get if you were, um, landing with your weight off on a jump but again in the trees and the powder rocker can be pretty awesome especially with magnet traction but again just trying to stick to profiles here um, so the next one we have it's going to be a hybrid and this is going to be what you'll see on a board like nitro's gullwing technology um, maybe burton flying v things like that this board and you can see where the lines are here hopefully you can see that in the video basically the inserts there's going to be there's going to be a rocker part between your feet 
but right outside of that, right where the inserts are, you're going to have camber zones. So you're still going to get that playful, floaty feel of rocker. It's still going to float really well in powder. But these camber zones will give you a little bit more resistance when you want to do an ollie. And the other thing it's going to do is you're going to get a bit more edge hold because when you weight these down, that these section you get this section of the edge back so you're going to be able to wait get um edge contact all the way to the widest point of your board rather than with rocker where it's just between your feet you're going to get a much longer effective edge um so this would be a hybrid the main downside i would say to a hybrid in my opinion is it kind of can feel weird on rails sometimes because you have those zones um, but it just depends on your style if you do board slides like more on your binding than in between your feet anyway it might feel really good but yeah, so that is your hybrid camber that would be found in like Nitro's Gullwing or um, Burton's Flying V, right? That's going to be rocker between the feet, camber right as the insert start. Now this next one, it's going to look just like the hybrid I just showed you. It's going to look pretty much just like it, but with a slight variation. This is going to be Never Summer's take on this. They have, they do have different profiles now coming out with the Ripsaw and I think the Fun Slinger and stuff. But this is their traditional, this is the one that really got popular in Never Summer's line. Now you can see, hopefully you can see from the video. I can't, <laughs> I don't know. If, hopefully it will record and probably and you'll be able to see these dotted lines here. <clears throat> this, this starts, this camber zone starts outside the inserts. Whereas this camber zone starts a little bit before the inserts. So... The difference between these two is this one is going to ride more like a traditional cambered board, but with a, a little bit of looseness, a little bit of play between the feet, a little bit of, of that swivel feel you get with a rocker. Whereas this one's going to feel more like a rocker board, but with more edge hold. So this one will feel like more like a cambered board, but with a little more play. This one will feel more like a rocker board, but with more edge hold. You'll still get a little bit of pop out of the tips here, more so than you would with a rocker, but... um. Like I said, with, this makes a big difference in how in how the board feels. Whether the inserts are right on the camera zones, or the camera zones start right out the insert packs. Because when it starts outside, it, it really does feel like you're riding a rocker board until you lean into a turn. And then the other edge, right on here, out to the contact point, starts digging in. Digging in and that's where, you, that's where you really feel the difference, just in the turns. Um, whereas this, you know, you just turn and that part between your feet, that's pretty much all you have to hold you on edge um, so this is more like camera board but with rocker between the feet a little bit of swivel play feel and this is more like a rocker board um, just with extra edge hold now these do use different side cuts and a lot of times um, you'll see like a dual aggressive progressive on this style and um, never summer keeps it they kind of do the opposite so it's um, they use a flat like almost no radius in between the feet I think it is. I think it is no radius, a little bit between the feet, and then it kind of sprawls out. Um, they have to basically the point I'm trying to say because I don't want to stray too far from the profiles, but these two shapes um, require, in my opinion, they do require a different side cut to work. Um, this has a um, like less radius, uh, larger radius in the tips, so that you don't catch when you have all that pressure going down on the um, on the camera zone here. That's what Nitro does at least. Whereas this, you're gonna have a, a, like a, a less of a, um, a larger radius in the middle with a smaller radius in the tips. That way when you when you lean, it really digs in. Um, and again, that's not really drawn out here because I'm just focusing on profiles, but um, they're different. They ride a lot different. And then you have your next one. This is gonna be a flat board. Just, and that's exactly, I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, basically, the, the, some companies took the this took the difference between this and this and said, hey, let's just make a flat board. And this is going to have, be the best of both worlds, essentially. You're going to get your edge hold. You're going to get pop. You're going to have a full effective edge, but it's not going to be preloaded. It's not going to be weighted down the same way as camber. It's going to be right in between, exactly as it sounds. Um, the, the, the upside of this is you can still do the trees. You can still do the powder. You can still ollie it. So you get the best of both worlds, but you also kind of compromise a little bit, in my opinion because you do lose your snap. You do lose the power of a camber board. But if you're looking for one board that can kind of do it all, you're a beginner, or you just like something you can flex a lot, uh, this is a good way to go 
Whereas like camber, it's really going to be for the harder charging people who want to do bigger jumps or carve hard, um, things like that. Flat is really good for park, um, but it's not the only one that's good for park because flex matters too. Just going off profile though, this is what I personally use if I was doing a lot of rails because you don't have these funky shapes under your feet. It's consistent, it's poppy, and it's it's manageable on jumps. Um, I've ridden a lot of flat boards over the years and I really I really like them, the Nitro Rogue. Um, what were the other ones? Swindle, things like that. This is a, and then bump below it, it's gonna be very similar. It's a flat with early rods, so you're gonna lose a little bit of effective edge, but the upside of this is because you have more kick in the nose and the tail, and I drew all these basically in a twin shape, right? Uh, you're gonna get a little more powder. You're gonna get a little bit more float and powder. And the other thing this early rise does, I'm gonna talk about this in a minute. It, I, I'm gonna bring it up again in a minute, but it raises the widest point of the board so that it effectively narrows the width of your board and makes it feel a lot more responsive. So if you have a bigger foot, early rise can be a really good thing. Because personally, I have a bigger foot, but I'm a lighter weight guy. I'm, you know, six foot two, but I'm only 165 pounds, but my, my feet are size 12. So I prefer a board with that early rise so that instead of fighting the widest point of the board, it effectively narrows it. Um, and I'll, I'll show you that right here. So this is going to be a different profile. There's going to be a hybrid as well, but I wanted to draw this out um, just to show you kind of what's going on here. This this is my preference for a camber board like a hundred percent this is my preference you have camber pretty much throughout the entire effect of the average board except it comes up a little earlier so it's not all the way out to the contact point it comes out a little bit earlier so what happens is even though this looks like a standard camber board when you lay it flat when you're just looking at it when you weight it down it when it flattens out these tips actually come up a little bit so you're still you're effectively narrowing the width of your board. So if you have big feet, this is amazing because you can get that responsive feel that other riders get with a narrow board, but you can still not have to experience that toe drag and getting booted out of your turns and things like that. And when you're on a really steep hill, this matters even more, especially if you're in kind of a dangerous situation and it can be icy. Um, it's not good, right? Now, the downside to this is if you weigh a lot, it might not be a good option. You might still want to go with camber because you, you do lose some effective edge on this. If it doesn't have, you know, anyone over 180 or I guess anyone over 200 pounds, I'd really recommend something with some kind of grip tech, whether that's magnet traction or vario grip, something that's get, catered towards grip, especially if you ride in a place with more ice. Whereas this, this would work for something like I personally love it because I don't need a whole lot of extra grip on my board. I'm not that heavy of a dude. So this, or oh, that pretty much any side cut will work for me. And I love it because again, you can see here, if this part is right, it's, it's raised up. This is the widest part of the board. But if you shorten that and your effective edge is only cut down just a little bit, you can see these green arrows are shorter than this one. And this is drawn to kind of exaggerate it. You can see it, it effectively narrows the width of your board, which makes it a lot more responsive and a lot more fun if you're a lighter weight guy who doesn't like fighting that massive width. Um, so this would be fine on like a Nitro T1, Jones Mountain Twin, Rome National. Those are all the boards I was going back and forth between. I ended up going with the T1 uh, because it was less money, but also because they have a reflex core profile and rail killer edge. Um, I just like Nitro boards. It just always kind of... I had, I've always have had good luck with them and their and their surface and everything. So, um, yeah, I ended up going with the T1. Still has a centered base, doesn't have all the bells and whistles, standard side cut, just radi radius, standard radial side cut, but uh, still a great board because this technology is like is like my new favorite. It's you get you get all the pop of camber, you get all the power, but you don't have to fight the width of your standard wide board, right? I got a 155 wide, so it's it's a big. It's got a lot of surface area and it can fit my feet, but I don't have to fight all, all of that width of the board because of the early rise. Now, this isn't gonna be another variation of this. This is something like you'd see on the Smoke and Jetson where it's gonna be, the camber's point's gonna be smaller and the, and the rocker's gonna start a little bit sooner um, outside, the, outside the contact points. What this is gonna do is gonna give you a lot more float and powder, but you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of your effective edge. So, 
this board is going to wash out on a, on a hard turn before this board would. Um, but again, you get a lot more float and powder and you, you sh effectively narrow your board even more. So you'll be able to ride what feels like a much narrower board than if you were to ride um, a standard camber. Right, this is gonna feel the widest. These feel can feel kind of wide sometimes. The flat ones can as well. But these flat with early rise, the camber with early rise, um, even earlier rise, like the rocker section under the feet and stuff, those are gonna really, really shorten your effective edge. Rocker does too. But again, it, sometimes it, it shortens it a little bit too much. I personally don't like straight up rocker boards. Um, I've had hybrids and uh, both Never Summer and Nitro and had flat boards, flat with early rise, and um, I've had camber boards in the past, of course, because I've been snowboarding before all this stuff was even around, um, but this is my favorite profile so far. I, I'll see how it does not powder. I haven't gotten a powder day on it, but this generally, just from the little bit of time I've had on it, is my favorite, um, and I would be curious to see how this rides because it, it's going to, this is going to be more powder specific, but on a pow day, I bet it's amazing. There's one last shape I want to go over, which is this directional hybrid. Basically, these boards, are they tend to be a little bit shorter, and they're going to have a little bit of camber in the back, so you still have your pop, but you're going to have rocker in the front. So if you find yourself on a powder day, you're still going to have that stiff back, so you have your control. And this is going to usually have a, a setback on the insert, so it'll usually be further toward the tail than the nose, and the nose is going to be nice and long, and, and it's going to be sometimes even really wide just to help you get that float in the powder. These can be really, really fun if you're if you're not um, riding switch a lot. Uh, personally, I love riding switch, so I'd probably never buy one, but I mean, to be honest, but if you're not a huge fan of like riding switch and you really just wanna have fun on powder days, this directional hybrid shape could be a really good way to go. Um, now, like I said, these are just the basics, basic profile, so I didn't, I didn't go into different, um, different things like like carbon bands and like different profile um thicknesses and things like that so th these all these all even if you have two boards if you have a different different technology in it it could ride differently if you have a stiff flex meet softer flex it's gonna it could ride significantly different um, but this is the general generally this these are the profiles you're going to be looking at um so um, it, how to apply this if you like going hard if you like charging hard and you really like big jumps camber all the way or this camber with the um early rise will work for you as well um rocker if you're in powder a lot if you really just like going out on this powder days and you don't like putting a whole lot of effort into uh fighting the, the snow rocker can be good hybrid that's gonna be a mix of the two, right? You're still gonna get the floating powder, but you have a little bit of hold on ice, and you're gonna you're gonna be able to charge on that a little bit if you want to. Again, these are gonna be very similar. The hybrid where it's, you have camber underfoot and outside the foot. The main difference is this one will be will feel more like a camber board with um, a pivot point in the middle, or this one will feel more like a rocker board but with more edge hold. Flat gonna be right in between. I put that right in the same category as this. But like I said, if you do more rails and park, I'd recommend flat probably over these two just because the consistency of it. Flat with early rise, I'm gonna put it in the same category as flat, but you're gonna get a more responsive feel and more float and powder. And you're also gonna get a little bit of less effective edge hold. So if you're concerned about that, make sure it has some kind of grip tech on it. Um, otherwise you will be washing out if it doesn't have power pods, magnet traction, something like that. Um, this, again, that's my favorite so far. You get a pop camber, you get a little bit of a narrower feel to the board, and you can you can ride these in powder from what I'm told, but I haven't gotten to try it out yet. I'm really excited to. And then you have the Smoke and Jetson type uh, profile that um, Smoke and uses on the Jetson board where you have the, the rocker starts a little bit sooner, a little bit more towards the inserts so that you have uh, more float and powder, but you still have that pop. And you have your directional style, which is just for directional powder riding not much else you could probably ride on hard pack too but i would not recommend taking in the park you can but it's uh it might feel a little funky when you try to do a switch ollie or um or an, an, a nollie i guess it's still called that on a snowboard right 
So uh, yeah, those are the basic profiles. And let me know if you have any questions. I'm always happy to answer them. I really want to get back into like analyzing snowboard technology, and this is the um, this is the start of it. And if you know you guys got a lot of value out of this, I'll go over profiles and um, not profiles, but like profiling. There's different things you can do to a board that will make it flex um, and feel a little bit different. So um, that's but that's a topic for another time. I can go over flex. I can go over side cuts. I can go over different bases. I can go over um, different widths of noses and tails and, and how that affects your ride. I can go over a lot of different things. So if you have any questions, hit me up and I'll try to do my best to get back to you. Hope you got value of this and thank you for watching.